In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. I am sure that many of my Christian brothers out there and sisters have heard or thought that the Antichrist is an Arab, or the Antichrist is a Muslim, or the Antichrist has to do with Islam, or the Middle East, or something like this, right? I can tell you nothing is further from the truth. First of all, the Antichrist will be a world leader. We know this. And I will have references to some of these quotations that I'm inferring from the Bible. I'll have those Bible quotations in my description. Now, which, you know, Antichrist, first of all, let's just start from the very basics. What does Antichrist mean? Anti, we know what anti means. Christos. So, anti means against, or anti means in the place of. Antichrist will be a man, according to the Bible, and according to the traditions of Islam, according to the Quran. And so, Antichrist will be a person who will be in the place of Jesus, will pretend to be Jesus, but will not be Jesus. Right? And he will, and, 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 and he will pretend to be Jesus, and will work miracles like Jesus did, and will call fire from the sky, and so on and so forth. We already know all this. So, he's going to do this, and he's going to be a world power, right? It says in the Bible, he will have authority over every, every tribe, every, tr every tongue, every nation. Now, I want to ask you one question. Which Muslim country, out of even the 60-some countries Muslims have, everything from Afghanistan to, to, to you know, to, to Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh, you know, Uzbekistan, any Muslim country. Which Muslim country even comes close to having the power of being a world leader? Or to have an army that can be a world uh, leadership army? You all probably read in the Bible about the mark of the beast, which is fabulous because, you know, the Bible has truth in it. And it was able to predict, and this is why Muslims believe, in the in the, in the truth that there is truth in the Bible and so and that if you read the scriptures correctly you will come to the truth that Muslims believe this and so if you read the Bible where it talks about the mark of the beast right where it will have control over all the human beings and no one will be able to buy or sell this is in the Bible you know no one will be able to buy or sell without the permission of the the Antichrist or the Beast, okay? Now, who has this technology today? Not the Muslim world. You think Saudi Arabia got technology? Saudi Arabia can't make a pin, okay? The Muslim countries in the Middle East, which is 20% of the Muslims, they can't make a pin. They got no, they're not in any place to rule the world. They got no, Saudi Arabia has no army. It just like started its army recently by, you know, really just, it, it had a national guard and now it has, I think a semi quasi sort of army, okay? And the other thing is, because somebody's going to come in place of Jesus, he's going to do what? According to the Bible and according to the Islamic tradition, he's going to fool a lot of the humanity that he is the, the Messiah, he's the Christ. Now, tell me, for instance, if somehow miraculously some Muslim person does take over the world, which Christian in their right mind, or which Jewish person in their right mind is ever going to follow a Muslim and be fooled by him and to worship him, right? It ain't going to happen. It just isn't going to happen because the world, you know, unfortunately what has happened with a lot of our Christian brothers, instead of reading the scripture, they have read the headlines into the scripture. They've read the headlines that are out there daily and then try to fixate it into the scripture and write books about it and sell it, and it became a good means of having monetary funds, okay? If you actually read the Bible, there's another element that's extremely, extremely interesting. But before I go there, I want to share with you some of the common traditions Muslims have with the, with the Christian brothers, especially about the coming of the end times. I think the Christians and the Muslims can agree we are near the end times, right? And we can also agree that there will be a false messiah. And he's going to fool the whole world. And it is only the and one of the qualities of the of the Antichrist in the Bible is he will be lawless. 
He will have no law, meaning he will have no he will he will reject the laws of God. And Muslims are a people who bless the seed of Abraham every day, five times a day. Muslims are a people who believe in the Ten Commandments, who believe in keeping the law. Jesus said, "I have not come to destroy to uh, to to uh, I have I have not come to destroy the law or the prophet." You know, we believe in the law. We believe, we we keep the law. We uh, Muslims pray to God five times a day. We, we, we keep the Ten Commandments, so on and so forth. Uh, we believe in the God of Abraham, okay? So, and we believe in the covenant given to Abraham. Now, the second coming of Jesus. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. In another place in the Bible, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places, all of these in the beginning of birth pains. Okay? Then it says, first, I want to remind you that in the last days there will come scoffers who will do every, every wrong you can think of, laugh at the truth. This, way, this will be their line of argument. So Jesus promised to come back. Did he? Then where is he? He'll never come. Why, as for, and then, you know, as far as we can remember, things have always been the same. Muslims believe Jesus is going to come back in flesh. Muslims believe that he's going to come back and rule the world, just like the Christians. By Mark, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. And by the way, this is in our tradition too, uh, about all of this, okay? Disobedient to the parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, treacherous rash, con conceited, lovers of pleasure, then lovers of God having a form of godliness, having a form of godliness, it says in another place in the Bible about the Antichrist that he will have a tongue of the dragon, and dragon in the biblical symbols means Satan, but he will outwardly look godly because he's going to work all these miracles, and he will come at a time where people will be talking about peace and security because there will be wars, and he's going to come, and he's going to save the world, but he's going to give, bring a very lawless, biblically speaking, a society that is completely against the ideas and the, and the, and the teachings of God. Okay? Not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, meaning the power of godliness, have nothing to do with them. There will be signs in the sun, moon, stars, on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming in the world, for heavenly bodies will be shaken. So, I'll just leave you at that for now, as far as this is concerned. But the other part I wanted to go over in the Bible is very interesting. Okay, Jesus says, Jesus actually tells us, that how can you tell, how can you tell that uh, who is the Antichrist, okay? And we, I'm going to talk about Muslims in reference to this. In John chapter 4, okay, verses 1 through 3, what is the spirit of the Antichrist? Question. Beloved, do not, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false promise prophets have gone out unto the world. By this you know the Spirit of God, by this statement. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is of God. Muslims confess, Islam confesses, you know, that Jesus of flesh. And so, according to the Bible, we are of God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. That means anti the Antichrist, okay, and, and, the, and the Islamic word for the Antichrist is the Jan. The Antichrist will not confess, will not accept that Jesus came in flesh. And this is 
the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming. And it continues from there. The, so, and the other thing I want to mention is, not only that, there's going to be no Muslim country that's going to rule the world, and, and then Christians are going to worship him or accept him, and the Jews are going to accept him. This is not possible at any time in the near future, and we already know we're at the end of times. Okay? We believe in keeping the law. The Antichrist does not believe in keeping the law. We believe Jesus is going to come back in the flesh, and Jesus was of the flesh. Muslims believe this. So we hope, God willing, we're not on the side of the Antichrist. The Bible does also say that he will have a military power that's specifically associated with the Roman, the Rome, meaning today's Europe. And many Christians have talked about this because it's, the words are there in the Bible and I can put that in the description uh, when I upload this video. So, I want my Christian brothers and sisters to understand that we have a lot in common, especially when it comes to end of times. Okay? We believe the end of times are coming. We believe the Antichrist is coming. We believe Jesus is coming. In fact, all three Abrahamic faiths, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, are all waiting for a Messiah. Okay? And what will happen is, in the process of waiting for the Messiah and the, the turmoil of the end of times, in, in this turmoil there will be somebody who's going to come up and offer peace to the world and in the process control the world. And the believers who already knew this information, which is specifically in this case the Muslims and the Christians, okay? They already know that there's going to be like this control in one world government and and you won't be able to buy unless you have the mark of the beast on your right hand or on your forehead. And we already know, we have these same signs. We're worried about the same things of the coming times. So Muslims and Christians should collaborate on understanding the scripture and understanding the end of times. And really, it is a source, it's a great source for the Muslims because we're like, wow, Jesus, peace, because we believe in Jesus, right? And we believe in what Jesus said. And so we're like, wow, this, you know, this is really great because there are, there are it shows that it's the Islamic teachings and the, and the teachings of Jesus Christ were so much in hand to hand. Anyway, having, putting that aside, we believe Jesus is coming in the flesh. And no, you know, the Arab world's not in a position to, to, to fool Jews and Christians into, into accepting them. It's, it's going to be some, something else, something else. But it, it is connected with the Roman Empire, or the, uh, the, Rome, the, the, the European world of today, in some shape or form, okay? So, and some people have said it refers to the Catholic Church, maybe, I'm not going to make any assumptions, I'm just going to say, right now, I'm not going to go into that, I'm just going to go into the point I'm making is, it's definitely not the Arabs. De and by the way, there are a lot of Arab Christians, okay? So, it's not the Arab Muslims, it's not the people of the Middle East, you know, Middle East is torn apart, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, they're all in turmoil, turmoil, Egypt, all in turmoil, there's it is no future power coming out from them, nor they got the technology to have uh, control over everyone's buying and selling and so on and so forth. So, I'll leave you with that. If you're interested in collaborating with the Muslims in eschatology, in the field of end of times, in the study of end of times, according to the Islamic traditions, according to the Bible, I invite you to subscribe, to like, to comment. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.